Now to an I-Team investigation tonight. Nearly every day here in the United States, someone is killed during a high-speed police chase, and many of those killed had nothing to do with the chase at all, which is why over the last year, the CBS News Texas I-Team has been investigating police pursuits. We've been speaking with victim families. We've been analyzing data and shedding light on department policies. Investigative reporter Brian New, in fact, traveled to rural central Texas to experience and share with you just how some officers are trained in pursuits and shares with you tonight how other officers can go years without any training at all. There's any available unit in the area, robbery suspect. The call comes in as an armed robbery suspect. Details are slim. Suspect vehicle, black SUV. With the partial license plate to go on, the officer quickly spots a suspect and initiates a traffic stop. But the suspect does not stop. With police in pursuit, the suspect takes off, going the wrong way down the road before blowing through stoplights. This is not real, but the goal of the Georgetown Police Department is to make it feel that way. On this driving track in rural Williamson County, the role of the robbery suspect is played by a driving instructor. Other instructors fill the course with uninvolved traffic, forcing officers to prioritize public safety while in real time factoring in the department's chase policy. It's not just reading it on a piece of paper and saying, hey, I know what that says. But then what it is is we're taking them and you have to apply that in a real world situation. Georgetown officers undergo behind the wheel training on a yearly basis. But a CBS News Texas I team investigation found not all police officers in Texas receive this type of continual training. To become a peace officer in Texas, the state requires a minimum of 643 hours of training. 32 of those hours must be emergency vehicle training. After the academy, Texas requires officers every year to complete 20 hours of continual education. But none of those hours are required to be behind the wheel. Instead, Texas leaves it up to departments to decide how much and how often officers should receive additional driving training. We believe in the importance of training our officers regularly and high levels of training, and this is this is an example of that. Much like Georgetown Police, the I team found many departments in North Texas put their officers through driving training yearly or every other year, but not all. At the Dallas Police Academy, cadets receive 40 hours of emergency vehicle training, eight more than the state requires. But after the academy. The department told the I-Team there is no continual behind the wheel training for its officers. Same goes for Arlington. The department told the I-Team veteran officers are not required to receive additional driving training. The Fort Worth Police Department told the I-Team its advanced training unit does offer several driving training courses for officers to update and renew their skills periodically. He just struck another curve. High speed police chases are inherently dangerous both for officers and the public. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, fatal crashes involving police chases kill more than one person every day. Last fall, a report from the U.S. Department of Justice called on police departments to limit pursuits and to ensure officers receive regular vehicle pursuit training. Officers who are not current on their training, the report noted, should not be allowed to engage in a pursuit. I think at the end of the day, training is what's mo most important. The more training we get on it, the more training hours we put into play, the better we're going to be. Police driving instructors also told us it's not just about more training, it's about more accurate training. Doug, we often hear police departments tell us that their officers underwent EVOC training. That stands for Emergency Vehicle Operation Course. Think of that as a bunch of cones being set up in a parking lot and officers working on maneuvering and braking at high speeds, all of which is important. But instructors say for the best results, that EVOC training needs to be coupled with scenario-based training, which is what we saw with the Georgetown Police Department and their mock vehicle chase. Things we may not know without the inside of the I-Team. Brian, thanks very much.